All right, this release is 87600. So what does this core module uh, support? Uh, the the HD base C chassis, as we just learned about. They use uh, auto discover, auto configure. We did a lot of work to do this guest mode thing. And this whole thing was done specifically to make it easier to deploy uh, the, these features. Now they both support video down conversion, which, which we already talked about. So let's talk about guest mode. So the idea of this came up a couple of years ago. And while uh, when you put these in and you want to control the TV via IR, you'd have to take a special cable out from the controller and then loop it to the to the chassis. And that, that causes time. You need those cables. It causes a little bit of a mess. Well, now we can do this via guest mode. And what guest mode means is it's using the same uh, Cat5, the, uh, the Ethernet connection to the chassis to transmit the codes. So that's why we call it guest mode. Uh, but so IR, and again, these are this is designed for display operation. So you have a uh, HD base T receiver connected. You have the emitter, if it's IR, on the uh, on that RX. And all you have to do now is tell the uh, the IR where it's going. So in this case, you can see all the uh, the V88 is right there, one through eight. Tell us where what receiver it's going to, and we will transmit the IR over the Ethernet and then send it out to the to the right one. This makes it much faster to to do IR for displays, uh, much quicker and much cleaner in a rack. So no special cables needed. We're doing the same exact thing for RS-232. Now we're only doing it one way, but we can't keep the pipe open to get the, the feedback. So we're just blasting the codes out, again, over the ethernet. And you can see we have a new communication device for this IP to serial via the 4K uh, M or PM uh, 18G. And then if you're doing generic uh, serial devices to control a bunch of TVs, you can do that. You can send it out again without any additional cables or tying up a port on the uh, the master controller or extender controller. And we added CEC control. This was asked a couple of years ago, and I know some people don't like CEC, and that that's fine. It's just an option. So we added this as event map only, which is located under the zone controllers, and you can see right there all the commands that we've added for CEC. So if you feel that you want to use this. And then again, if you use CEC and the display is compatible with that, there's no emitter, no 232 codes. There's no nothing, uh, no extra cables at all that are needed. But, you know, CEC is a little bit up in the air uh, with certain displays and firmware. So uh, use at your own risk, but we added it for you guys. So the V88 has audio, the V44 has no external audio outputs. We noticed that people were using these mostly for uh, for audio breakouts. They would take the audio or want to take the audio out and go to another audio routing uh, a matrix. To do that, and the way we did it was a little bit tough because it was always a zone-controlled output. So we still do that today, but we also added breakouts, breakouts for the ARC, whether it's HDMI or optical. The source breakout, so you can say, Audio output one is coming from audio or source one all the time, no matter what. So straight up breakouts to make this easier for you guys to do what you were trying to do. So we want to make that easier. So the part number is 268. So eight is the outputs. And then 26 is the uh, the, the configuration of, the, uh, of what can be sent. And so that derives from the eight that could be set for source, the eight that could be set for breakout, the eight that could be used for zone-based, or the chassis has two auxiliary inputs that you could switch, uh, one optical, one analog. So that's what equals the 26. I had a lot of questions about that uh, at CDS, so I figured I'd put that in there. Okay, this is one good thing that you guys you should know. When you're doing HDR, which is only on the V88, you need to select uh the copy from output to get the right edit so that's the way it works so we'll look at doing something different in the future but uh but for right now if you're doing hdr you got to select copy on the edit so i just wanted to make that clear all right so let's talk about the sio so as we talked about this adds both an input an auxiliary input as well as an auxiliary output 
So the output is one zone. So I know it has left and right, which you can set to mono, but you can't split them. So I have one zone be left and one zone be be right, like like how we, you can on the on the other chassis. So it is one zone. That zone does add the, the sub output, which is variable, as we talked about, and it's one source that you can select either optical coaxial or analog. And you can see uh, in that picture there what it looks like. So it adds the source. It also adds the zone. So if you add one, you'll get an extra input as well as an extra output. This piece does support the lip sync delay as well as the five band EQ. Plus, just like the SII, this does have the LED brightness control on it. Because likely you're going to put this behind a TV and I don't know if you guys are like me, the bright light can uh, wake you up at night. So now we talked about this, uh, uh, but I'll just, just to review it, again, this is like the SIO where it adds an input plus an output, only it's amplified. So you get one zone of left and right, and you could set that to mono if you if you'd like, but it is one zone. You do get the sub output with that, which is variable, crossover at 100 hertz. The amp is 80 watts at eight, at eight uh, 100 watts at four, but this one is bridgeable at 200 watts. You still get the lip sync delay of up to 400 milliseconds plus the five band EQ. And in the configurator, it works the same way, uh, but this device, unlike the SIO, because it's not amplified, can work as a standalone device or a single chassis is what we call it. And it can work that way even if you have other multi-chassis in the system. So if you have a multi-chassis with an MTX and two or three EXTs, you want to add this for little Jimmy's room, then you can add it as a single chassis and have a three-by-one system. And that's that's cool. So when you when it's in multi-chassis, it's one source that you can select, select either optical, coaxial, or analog, and that's it. It's fixed. Um, if you're using it as a single chassis, it's a three by one. And just like an AVR, you could just select it and switch on the fly. And you can see there from the picture that that's how it adds. There's been a few enhancements here. Um, I mean, th this whole software was really around getting the firmware and the, uh, the drivers for these new hardware products. But along with that, we made some enhancements specifically to our IPD solution. Been a lot of improvements here. One is, so you guys know, uh, anything that uses uh, our Dante, so the MTX with the uh, NAC card in it, uh, 3MSI, EXTs, they have two IP addresses, right? So one is for the what we call the MCU network that handles the volume control, switching, and all that stuff. And then there's a Dante network, which handles streaming the sources in and out. So before we had one IP address, uh, one, one ability to set static IP address for the MCU, but we let Dante do what it does. And what we have done is actually give you the ability to set the static from here. Now, I will say, uh, some of you have used Dante controller to set a static IP address for the Dante network, but that is bad. Don't do that. Um, use this instead, because what when you do that using Dante controller, what you do is actually factory default the chassis and creates, creates a lot of problems. So we did this to alleviate problems and, and help you guys out. And this is a much cleaner, faster, and better way to do it. There's new firmware available for the AMP EXT. So I, I copied this so you can see what numbers they are. Uh, it's 1.0.6.1. Uh, and that, that is important. So if you are using an AMP EXT on a project, you want to update to this core module when it comes out on the 18th, and you want to update the firmware for the chassis. There, that does resolve an issue where it will it would require a reboot necessary to the actual AMP EXT chassis. Uh, but yeah, so we, we updated the firmware for that piece to, to solve that issue. We added a reboot device to the drop-down menu. And we did a bunch of stability and recovery improvements. Uh, a lot of improvements here. I don't want to go into the whole list, but uh, again, if you're running IPDs um, in any any sort of fashion, you should update to eight seven six hundred when that when that release drops on the 18th. There's a lot of changes here that we've added uh, that will increase uh, stability and, and overall improvements. All right, so a few drivers, the Brone New Tone Overture system that is in this release. We showed this at Cedia. Now these are indoor air, air quality. Now. From our previous days as Nortec uh, Control, 
or even before that, we were partnered with Brown Newtone. Uh, we were partner companies. So as we have that relationship, we've uh, we still have that relationship, and we we did this uh, for these devices. Now these are indoor air quality devices, but they work kind of cool. They um, when they sense a dangerous condition, they'll if, if you see the plug, it'll it'll turn that outlet on automatically or in the decora style in wall, it will actually turn the, the fan on for a bathroom, say, uh, automatically. So you don't have to turn it on, turn it off. It just does it all by itself. And we, we do that uh, inside of utilities. So that is available in this uh, 87600 branch. And we talked about the, uh, the C3IP. So that's also in the 87600 branch in their utilities. And I actually love this place too, the uh, the DC-12. So that is also uh, going to be in the 87600 branch. Yeah, it's important to note on that. Um, we had some questions on the webinar we did yesterday about this. Um, you know, the DC-12, we've got the firmware, everything pre-done on this release, but this is not going to be shipping until Q1. So even though we'll be ready to support it in this release next week, we can start to see this shipping. You'll be able to see pre-orders probably towards the end of the year, but this guy won't be shipping out until Q1. Yeah, good, good note on that. So there's been a bunch of CERs. As all releases, we have a whole lot of CERs in the uh, the 600 branch. Uh, one of the, the ones to note is we've got, uh, we've got some reports about uh, when you're setting up direct mode, for the HHRs, that it was actually a Windows issue, uh, but yeah, sometimes the, the the IP wouldn't stick, so we found that issue, and and that's in here. Along with uh, always a couple of of Lutron Leap issues that we find, and uh, these are all going to be in the release notes. All right, so along with every release that we do, you'll have the eight seven release notes, and they'll have a detailed list of what we changed, what was added, as well as all the CERs. So definitely review that. Uh, this will be uh, posted on the 18th, so you'll have a, you can always review this. There is a new version to the IPD design guide, so that that uh, that is going to be updated and it'll be posted on the 18th, and that will have the the new SKUs that we have, the SIO and the Antu channel, as long well, as well as some of the the different ways that uh, that they can be configured. So that's all been updated, so that'll be ready for you guys, as well as integration notes. So the, all the integration notes uh, around the IPDs for those chassis, as well as the V88, V44, and the Overture. So that's a new integration note to support the, the new driver. And that is it. So again, uh, this will go out on the 18th, as, as well as shipping of the new hardware. Thank you for your time today, guys.